Hello and welcome back to another A Industries bonus video. Today we'll be reviewing the moth. One of the complaints I have seen regularly coming from the board recently is that the moth doesn't have enough fuel, doesn't have enough range. So first off we'll give it a flight um, in its standard configuration um, and just see how far it goes. So we're launching from round range, taking it up at a sort of conservative launch. We'll go east because that's kind of the worst case. And we'll take a full load of weapons all the way because again that's kind of the worst case. So we're coming up on our cruise altitude now, just leveling out. Um, now this eastern coast is the eastern border of corporate region zero so we will just take a note here of how much fuel we have as we fly past so 2680 that's a reasonable amount that's our reference point so we'll just time skip ahead um, as I said, flying east is the worst case because the planet underneath us is spinning in the same direction that we're traveling. Uh, the atmosphere we're in is spinning with us to a degree, but it's not spinning as fast as the surface. So because we're high up, there will be a difference there. If we um, flew west, we would make it a bit further, but we'll see how far we go this direction. So just um, taking care to manage my height here, not too, not too ballooning, not too sinking. You see, every now and again, I need to come out of time skip just to correct it. I don't like going more than about three times time skip. It just makes everything just that little bit more twitchy, and I don't like. The way that uh, handles. Um, it can do it. You'll see I switched to four times just then um, and sometimes I do switch to four times if I'm getting bored but three feels right. Okay so we're crossing most of Tape's territory here now with what would be penguin stuff I think to the to the right there and now approaching which is border I think is coming up Let's, uh, just keep trucking along yeah, it's passing twitches territory now so from round range I could easily hit there you'll see I've still got quite a bit of fuel left um, enough for an attack but um, not enough to fly across this continent so I'll turn and we'll start to see the few interesting things about running low on fuel um, there have been a bunch of minor corrections made since last time the moth flew um, mainly that the uh, air brakes underneath are positioned differently so they won't hit the ground and rip the plane to pieces um, we have very limited roll control and quite strong control surfaces on that axis so I'm just trying to throw our body into the airflow to get us turned around um, as well as keeping us sort of upright so that we'll skip if you like uh, because we're losing quite a bit of altitude right now I want to get the direction changed because we are still quite far off that and I'm gonna want to glide over there as we run out of fuel test the glide slope and test the landing characteristics so everything else looks good we're loaded up on ammo, energy, oxidizer we'll just run the fuel out which is going to cut off our APU unfortunately but we needed that fuel so now we'll glide. Um, I'll check the map. You can just see where the trajectory would throw me. 
um, in theory. So see, it doesn't think I'm going to make it based on my trajectory. But the way to tell this is, you'll see as I sort of straighten up um, and pump some of the oxidizer back into the nose, um, is you see the little gap above the nose there? If the gap between the nose and the land is shrinking, then I'm going to fly over the land. So at the moment, it's pretty stable, so I'll need to just nose up slightly with that. Um, although, that looks okay, so you'll see I am roughly breaking even there. So, still thinks I'm not going to make it, but you'll see that that gap is narrowing now, which means we're going to pass the shoreline, which is all I really care about. We'll see how far we go. Uh, ladders are down. I don't think I've had those down the whole time. Hopefully not. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, so that uh, narrowing gap, as I said, is a good indicator. It looks like we'll be able to land quite a bit inland. We've still got a good uh, 4,000 meters, good over 10,000 feet. Um, so... Let's just uh, bring ourselves around. Yeah, we're going to make that far shore so we don't even have to land on these nearby slopes. I'm going to aim in that section just off to the right there, I think. And it's going to require a little bit of a turn. which we'll have to do with some altitude because the turn will cost us speed and we'll need to nose down and drop to gain the speed back to maintain control. Um, we've run out of electric charge, which means no lights for landing. So that's something that I'm gonna need to look at. Um, no torque doesn't really matter. We're mainly getting control from our lifting surfaces here. So let's just drop the nose down a little. Lose some of the last height. Turn our nose along this little jutting out peninsula bit. Gear down. Pull up. Level out. And without being able to see the ground, it's pretty awkward, but I think we'll be able to manage it by just keeping our rate of descent low enough. So we'll just pulse it. Um, staying sort of, there we go, safely on the ground, breaking away, you'll see the um, <laughs> the air brakes on the underside there are twisted out sideways a lot more than they used to be, that um, helps them with a lot of different things actually, not just uh, working for brakes, um, we hardly ever need to nose forward so we don't really lose anything and we gain a bunch of your control. All right, so let's see how far we went. Uh, we're there, round range is just over there. You'll see the thing. So we went around the planet, and then a little bit more, and then up from the equator by another short range. But that means we could easily hit KSC, for example, from there. So now I'm launching my first variant here. You'll notice this time the liquid fuel tank is full. So usually when I run with these planes, I run with a reduced fuel tank um, in the back. Um, I don't fly with those fuel tanks full. And that turned out to be a mistake last time. Uh, I ran out of fuel. Uh, there were a good deal of mistakes, but that one would have saved, well actually just about any of the mistakes I made would have, uh, would have saved me if I hadn't made them. <laughs> so let's just... Um, see how much fuel we end with as we reach the shore here so all right so we are approaching it now okay so a bit more fuel available there than it has been previously uh not a huge amount more but notable um, enough that I could fly that extra continent enough that I could 
spend more time at low altitude at my target site, so I mean that's a good thing in general. The only thing is it makes that launch a little nasty and flying around a little nasty if I have to go and land straight away. Uh, so typically I just don't bother. I just don't do the big things. So now for the suggestion made by the board. Dropping out the oxidizer, I will switch that as an upgrade. Why is that? Oh no, I do need to keep some mass in the nose. There we go. Um, let me think about this. Is that going to be the best place? Yeah, it probably is going to be the best way to add it. I could try a sloped nose and get a little more, but I don't know. No, I think I think the uh, normal jet tanks will be the way to go, rather than getting a long sloped nose or something. Um, so let's do that. So what I was originally doing anyway. Okay, so let's just hook that on and um, make sure the fuel is right. Just filling this back up so... Uh, we're all ready to go. Alright. Here goes nothing. See how it drags and thrusts. So what I discovered here immediately was that we are getting a lot more lift from the wings. Um, that's just because of the weight. Uh, even the body is giving us quite a bit of lift right now. Um, with the additional weight it's just struggling. Uh, I spent a while with this, um, maybe if I took away the air brakes and lost some maneuverability it would be feasible, but the thrust to weight is just not high enough with this base design, so after a while I gave up. It only reached cruise altitude after it had drained all the fuel down, which kind of escapes the point. So I need to look at another way of getting up altitude with more fuel available if that's so important but this isn't some filthy dictatorship I do answer to the board so if the board has something that they have to say I can veto it if I believe it's truly not in the best interest but that's not something to be done lightly so what I'm doing is building a rocket sled um, you haven't seen it before, but this vehicle is designed to take quite a large underslung payload, um, which the intention was a bomb, honestly, of some kind, some kind of big bomb. That's what I was going for. Um, maybe something from the Death's Head series? I, I don't know. Um, so I hook this up. Give it some stability when it pushes, because it's going to be pushing pretty hard. Um, I'll give it an intake. Yeah, let's just use one of these air intakes. Beautiful. Everyone knows that a solid rocket needs an intake. Full ejection force to get it away from us. Um, so, I think. I think that's it. There have been a few little adjustments. I've switched from um, the APU to looking into doing... On the front there you'll notice there's a RTG now and a battery. That hopefully will provide me with light if I, um, if I need it. Um, hmm. Maybe, I don't know, maybe go with the other type of landing gear. I mean, I don't... I mean, it's cheaper. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks good. Just keep it from banging the bottom if it uh, struggles a bit, but uh, very cheap, very good. Let's do it. So, handles great. Um, this is basically flying now with full fuel, but without the fuel expansion suggested by the board. Honestly, you asked me those board members who were uh, complaining in that regard, didn't know what they're talking about, but hey, that's why we have to do these reviews. <laughs> Quite a few improvements have been made because of the review, so it's not a huge loss. Uh, you'll notice there I had a quick glance at the um, lift I'm getting, and it's not huge, like there's minimal lift from the body. Um, pretty good lift from the main wings, which is exactly where I want it. I don't want too much drag So we're getting quite a bit more fuel available when we reach that coast, so we'll do another try with the board suggested nose extension on the fuel there So it's not to sniff at um, we are talking adding another 800 fuel, bringing it up to about 4,000 from about 3,000 odd. Which is not nothing. Um, the gliding characteristics are slightly better, just because the empty tanks on the front there do help um, at those final stages, but it shouldn't have to glide. Um, that's something that shouldn't come up. <laughs> which made the other version not really worth it um, because it had to burn off all its fuel before it could get to that altitude. So there we have the final results. Um, in practical terms, let's look at what that means. So we really the only ones that are hugely useful to me are the ones I had anyway. The sled, however, that's something we can look at. I like the idea of using that to get more payload, more bombs, rather than more fuel. I do like that it's taken me down this route. Um, a redesign probably will be necessary, so we'll look into that. Um, but there you go. You're going to have to vote this time. Um, if you want to make your opinion known, I'll leave two options, one for um, voting for more fuel and one for leaving it in the hands of the CEO for now. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.